Hello, this is John from Cultured Analysis. I'd like to welcome you back to another um, installment of Kombucha Chem Academy. In our prior video, we discussed the importance of measuring alcohol content in kombucha. And we're gonna link that below for you if you haven't seen it already. In today's video, we'd like to go a step further with this. And we'd like to discuss some of the um, instrumental methods that are used both in our lab and also useful in um, other labs, such as your own if you want to do this in-house, for actually making um, alcohol measurements in your own kombucha. So let's start by talking about the gold standard here. So the gold standard here is a technique called headspace gas chromatography. Um, as you can tell, it's the most expensive technique that we're going to talk about. Um, to set up an instrument like this is generally going to cost upwards of $10,000, um, maybe even uh, multiples of that, depending upon the configuration that you want to use. And because of this, this would be an instrument that typically would be found in a professional analytical laboratory. So most kombucha brewers would not have direct access to this kind of instrumentation. This is the instrument that we use um, here at Cultured Analysis. If you come to us for any kind of analysis requiring an alcohol, alcohol by volume measurement, this is the technique that we're going to use because it's the most accurate and precise technique um, that we can use for kombucha for your money. Now, what if you want to um, set up your own analysis lab um, to monitor your own kombucha in your own environment? Well, that's a possibility as well. And we have options um, that are actually quite affordable in this regard. So one that we highly recommend here is um, the Rare Combinations alcohol sensor, which you can um, buy directly from Rare Combinations and our friend Nick Robinson there for $1,499 or thereabouts. And when you do that, you get absolutely everything you need to get started and up and running. Um, we do use this routinely um, at Cultured Analysis. We use it primarily for our research and development efforts and also for um, individual projects that we run. Um, again, we would probably not report out directly to a customer or a client using this. It's generally for our internal use only, but we found it to be a very fast instrument to use. It gets the data out quickly to you and it's great. It's a wonderful option for um, internal quality control. So we highly, highly recommend this and we'll link information about it um, below. And then finally, if you're really on a strict budget, another option that can be used is the Vernier Go Direct alcohol sensor. It's designed for educational use and that's actually where we use it. Um, since we're affiliated with an academic um, program as well. Uh, we've developed kombucha laboratories where we uh, measure, amongst other things, alcohol in kombucha. And we have our students use this um, Go Direct sensor, and it turns out to be um, a little longer. It takes a little longer to get a good measurement on it. It's not quite as accurate or precise as either the rare combinations or the headspace gas chromatography option. But nonetheless, it could be an acceptable option if you're on a strict budget and you wanna do your own internal quality control. So with that said, let's go to the lab and talk individually about each one of these possibilities. Welcome to the lab, folks. So what I wanna show you first is going to be the um, gas chromatography um, headspace instrument that we just talked about in the introduction. So the body of the instrument is right here. And what we'll see primarily is that we need to get a separation here. So we have to assume that what we're um, injecting into the instrument is going to be a mixture of components. So we have a capillary column in here that's going to allow us to separate those components in the vapor phase or in the gas phase. All right, so how do we get the um, sample into the instrument? What well, has to be injected into the instrument? But since we're dealing with headspace um, chromatography, the idea here is that we're going to have a um, solution here that's going to contain the ethyl, ethyl alcohol or ethanol that um, would be in your kombucha sample. So the kombucha sample would be in here. And then along with some water and some other things that we place in here. So then what happens is we heat this up to about 80 degrees Celsius and then the um, ethanol vapor um, forms above the liquid in what we call the headspace. So then we take a syringe, a gas tight syringe, and sample some of the vapor from the headspace. And then either using an auto sampler unit or a manual injection, 
we can then get that headspace vapor onto the instrument where it can then um, be separated by way of the column. And at the end, we have a detector that allows us to see the individual components as they come off the column. So ultimately, what you would end up getting would be what we call a gas chromatogram, which looks something like this. And you'll see in this case that we have two peaks. We have one for the ethanol here, which is the thing that we're interested in. And then we also put another alcohol in here, which is used as a standard for comparison. So you can see how the two alcohols are separated from each other. So ultimately, then what we do is we look at the area under the ethanol peak, and from that, we can determine the concentration of the ethanol in the kombucha sample. So that's how this instrument works. Okay. So next, we'd like to um, talk a little bit about the um, rare combinations alcohol sensor. So this is a really good option, again, for somebody who's doing in-house measurements um, in a kombucha production facility. We very highly recommend it. Um, it gives nice, accurate measurements. It's one of these situations where it's a little bit pricey compared to other options, such as the Vernier. But again, you're going to get what you pay for in my opinion. So you're gonna get a more accurate measurement here. And the other nice thing about this is you get a much faster response time. So it doesn't take as much time to get a good measurement. So um, here's what the instrument looks like. We actually have the little sensor probe down here. And you need about 20 to 25 milliliters of sample to be able to make a good measurement. So as we're gonna find out, that's similar to what we need to use the little Vernier sensor as well. All right, so once we have the um, instrument up and running, it does take a little bit of time for it to warm up. But once we have it up and running, um, what we will do here is place the sample, and the sample in this case is just a um, ethyl alcohol standard that I prepared. And what you'll notice here on the readout is that we'll get counts. Now you'll notice also that there's an internal calibration here that gives a percent um, ethanol. But um, I tend to not like to use this. I like to read counts, which are over here on the right. And um, the counts can then be related again back to the concentration of the ethanol sample. All right, another thing to keep note of here, notice that even just after about 10 to 15 seconds, we have a nice steady reading here. So it's a very quick response time. So it's a nice fast sensor. Again, that's part of what you're paying for here. Um, there is a temperature um, dependence here, so one thing that we like to do when we use this sensor is to make sure that the um, temperature is within plus or minus um, half a degree or less when we make consecutive measurements. And again, that's because the um, temperature, or rather the sensor, is temperature dependent in its readout. And if we need to, for example, warm up a sample a little bit, it's easy to do. I just put my hand around it and I can raise the temperature a half a degree or a degree or two if I need to do that so that I can make sure all of the temperatures remain constant for my readings. One thing I will mention for all of these techniques to get the very best results, um, one thing that we have to do is compare the kombucha reading against readings that we um, make using standard ethanol solutions of known concentrations. So we can generate this thing called a standard curve with all those known concentrations in it. We can apply a mathematical fit to that curve and then from the mathematical fit, we can make a comparison of the kombucha reading back to the curve and then ultimately get from that um, an accurate concentration of the ethyl alcohol in the kombucha or the ethanol in the kombucha. So that's how the rare combination sensor works. Again, highly recommended. Okay, I'd like to show you next the um, Vernier Go Direct Alcohol Sensor. So this is a really nice little unit. Like we said, it, it's the least expensive option um, that we gave you. You can pick this up for about $165 with everything that you need to get going. So what you have is the sensor unit itself. You have a um, sample container which you can see that I filled with about um, 25 milliliters of my sample here, which is just an ethanol um, standard that I prepared. And that's another thing to mention. As we um, work through these um, different procedures, we'd see that the various um, instruments do require different volumes of sample. So um, both this and the um, rare combinations require about 20 to 25 milliliters of sample to get going, whereas the headspace um, gas um, chromatograph requires only about a tenth of a milliliter 
to um, get a good measurement. So these do require a little bit more sample. All right, so the nice thing about this sensor is that we can Bluetooth connect it to an app, which can be downloaded from um, Vernier. And I have that um, app loaded onto my cell phone here. Very simple Bluetooth connection. So all I need to do, and this will give you an idea of how quickly the sensor responds, is I'll place the sensor into the um, headspace here, and I'll hit collect, and we'll start to um, collect some data here. Now, this takes a little bit of time to develop, but you can see a curve developing here over time, and you can see the sensor responding um, to the alcohol again in the headspace here. So what the sensor is responding to is the um, ethanol vapor that's just naturally above the sample here. And we're seeing the sensor adjust to that. So again, the sensor is increasing in response over time. So another thing to think about with any of these um, sensors or instruments is what, how long does it take to get a measurement? So um, in the case of this instrument, we've generally found that it takes anywhere from 300 to 400, maybe 500 seconds to get a good measurement at a certain concentration. So that is a um, disadvantage of um, this option is that it does take a little bit more time to get a measurement, all right? So, and you can see that happening here. Normally what we would like to do is we like to um, um, acquire the curve until it um, actually starts to level off. And then once the curve levels off over time, and just by looking at this, I'd say this is gonna probably level off in around um, somewhere between 100 and 200 seconds. And then once the curve levels off, that's when we take our reading that we're going to use to um, determine our ethanol content. So again, a very nice, inexpensive option. It's a good option for somebody who's on a shoestring budget who wants to do internal quality control in their own small kombucha laboratory. We hope you've enjoyed our overview of these three techniques for measuring alcohol in kombucha, um, all of which we do recommend. Obviously, every technique is going to have its pros and cons associated with it. If you um, have any questions about any of these techniques or devices, feel free to um, shoot us an email at our business account at cultureanalysis.com. And also, we will be um, linking information about the um, rare combinations and the Vernier sensors um, below for you to access. And again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.